The Lammermuir Hills is an area which is pretty well known for grouse shooting. Most of the estates that make up the Lammermuir Hills, including where I live, um, are part of the Southern Upland Moorland Group, which focuses their attention on the restoration of the peatland and the management of the heather moorland for grouse shooting predominantly. There's two sort of commercial aspects to managing an upland estate. You've got the sheep farming operation, and we run about 1,500 blackface sheep. And we've got the grouse shooting operation, which employs two full-time employees. The grouse shooting is a pretty key part of maintaining the habitat and the look and feel of the Lammermuir Hills. Um, the most obvious sign of that would be in the rotational muir burn that we do to manage the heather so that we can create a variety of different heather age groups so that you've got space for nesting birds, you've got a space for feeding birds. And that's really important because if you allow the heather just to run wild, it grows to about three feet high it becomes what we call rank heather, nothing can move through it, nothing can live in it, and it becomes a huge fire risk. When it dries out in the summer, one spark and it's all away. And the difference between Muirburn um, and a wildfire is that Muirburn is obviously conducted in a safe environment to a prescribed space, and it just burns the vegetation on top of the ground. Also, by doing it in the spring when it starts to warm up before, wildlife and such like is nesting, it uh, can thin the ticks out a little bit which can be a nuisance on other wildlife. And also by burning specific areas it can reduce the chance of, of wildfires and the reason our burning season finishes when it does is so we don't impact on nesting wildlife and other things but sadly the wildfires when they get going and if there's been nothing, no control burning to stop them, they will devastate vast areas, areas where the birds are nesting, destroy the nests, the eggs. And it burns down into the peat, which is what the heather grows on, and that releases the CO2 into the environment. So wildfires, really, really, really bad. Muirburn is a well-known and well-practiced land management technique. And the way it's heading, with governments, it looks like we're going to need to be licensed to be allowed to burn. The unseen side of the, the grouse shooting is the predator control that um, is conducted by the um, two keepers. And we snare stoats and weasels, foxes, and we also trap crows. Without that influence that we exert in the uplands, there would be far less biodiversity. That includes all your moorland birds, not just grouse. And I think that that's a, a point often overlooked, which is the additional add-on, if you like, benefit of keepering as a way of reversing biodiversity loss. For those of us who live and work in the countryside, it's blindingly obvious that you have to manage that space to some extent. Um, you can't just let it go, that does not achieve biodiversity gain. When you look at the uplands of Scotland in particular, they are one of the most biodiverse areas left in the UK. That is not by accident, it is by the very management of that space that you create that biodiversity. Poaching doesn't really tend to be an issue in Scotland from a grouse shooting perspective. There are a few issues to do with uh, illegal hair coursing. It involves gangs uh, coming into the countryside and streaming live on the phone, live on, live on the internet, dogs chasing hares. Now this can be done during the daytime and particularly with the, the field behind me that when the crops are cut and stubble is left on the ground, it's ideal because the hares will be coming out, they'll be feeding during the day, they'll be soaking up the sunlight and the criminal gangs, which is effectively what they are, will come in, they'll block the gateway so um, the likes of gamekeepers and farmers can't come in to stop them. They will set the dogs off on hares 
and there will be live betting. If it's done at night, what they'll do is they'll have a high-powered beam, a torch, and they'll shine that on the hair, and the dogs will, they generally have two dogs, one against the other, and they'll, they'll zoom off down the beam of light, uh, they'll eventually pick up the hair, Quite often as well, there are bets placed on the amount of times the dogs turn the hair. There's big money in it, and th these are the things that the rural communities suffer on a daily basis, and th what, the things that the police are really struggling to deal with. I think it is a shame that sometimes the voice of the rural community is not properly heard, properly understood, sometimes overridden in a slightly roughshod way because it doesn't seem to suit the sensibilities of the urban majority, whose view is probably not aligned with those that are actually living and working in the rural areas in the countryside. And the, the, the need for us to produce food and the increasing need to reverse biodiversity loss is strangely conflicting and it's extremely difficult to do both. You can't produce more cheap food and biodiversity gain without some form of compromise. And you cannot achieve biodiversity gain without some form of management control over that space. And sometimes those messages get lost in politics and we can pander to those who shout the loudest without understanding the long-term consequences of those actions.